In this video, we're going to cover GBA emulation on the PC version of RetroArch. Ah, the GBA, my absolute favorite handheld from the day it launched to now. It is just such an amazing system, great library of games, and completely emulatable, so you can enjoy it on any number of devices these days. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it set up on the PC version of RetroArch. So let's go ahead and dive in. So to get started with GBA emulation in the PC version of RetroArch, you need to install the PC version of RetroArch. So if you haven't already, head down to the description in this video to find my PC RetroArch tutorials playlist. And that's where you'll find an initial setup guide for getting the program installed and configuring settings. And you can do that on standalone or Steam versions. Then there's also a number of other core guides in there. If you are interested, the list is getting bigger because I am going through and doing all my updates. Next, you're going to need a couple of things. The first one is completely optional, and that is a Game Boy Advance BIOS file. This actually isn't needed for GBA emulation anymore, but it can still help with some rare compatibility issues, so it is nice to have. And the next, of course, is Game Boy Advance games. So if you have a physical Game Boy Advance and a selection of games, I do have a video on the channel on how to dump your Game Boy Advance BIOS and games for use in emulation. There's a number of different methods available that use Game Boy Interface or GameCube. You can use a Game Boy Advance GameCube adapter on Wii or GameCube or using a DS Lite with a flash card of some variety. So a link to this will be in the description below for those that are interested. Otherwise, you can always resort to Google and find things that way. Again, I really don't care how you do it. Just don't ask me for illegal download links because they will not be provided. But for the Game Boy Advance BIOS file, it needs to be named GBA underscore BIOS dot bin. And if you want to use it, it just goes into your RetroArch system folder. So for my demonstration purposes, I have RetroArch installed on my desktop. So I'm just going to open up the RetroArch folder, find the system folder, and drag my GBA BIOS file right inside. Again, the BIOS file is completely optional, but might help in rare instances of compatibility issues. Now for Game Boy Advance games, they should be in .gba, .bin format. Most of the time they're going to be in GBA format depending on how you dump them or if you find them on the internet. But you can leave them extracted or you can zip them up. Zip files will save you a bit of space, but GBA games aren't that big, so choose whichever one happens to float your boat. So for my example today, I have my games in zip format. But once you have your games sourced and in the format that you want them in, you just need to put them anywhere on your hard drive. It really doesn't matter where they go. So again, for demonstration purposes, my RetroArch folder is here on the desktop. I have a games folder here. And then I'm just going to put the Game Boy Advance games right inside. And done. So now we just need to download our Game Boy Advance core. So open up RetroArch. And you could use the keyboard or a controller here. If you have a controller hooked up, it should automatically be detected, and then you can use it within RetroArch, or you could just use the keyboard, like I said. But on the main menu, head over to the online updater, Core Downloader, and then press right on your keyboard or controller to get to the Nintendo section. And in this video, we're going to be using the MGBA Core for Game Boy Advance. So there we go, now it's installed. So back on the main menu, I can begin loading up Game Boy Advance content. So one method of doing so, load content, navigate to the directory where I have my games stored. So desktop, RetroArch folder, games folder, Game Boy Advance games. Then I can select a game and load the archive. And if you have that BIOS file in place, it should boot it up automatically. Or if you're not using one, it should boot straight into the game. But I'm not a big fan of that method of loading up games, so what I like to do instead is make a games playlist so it'll show up over on the left hand side of my screen. So the easiest way to do this on the PC version in my opinion is to use the desktop menu. So there's an option for the desktop menu here you could click or you could just press F5 on your keyboard. Now within the desktop menu you'll see the content browser here on the left, so just right click here, click on new playlist and type in Nintendo space dash space Game Boy Advance. There we go. And then press enter and you should be greeted by a new Nintendo Game Boy Advance playlist entry here on the left with an accompanying logo. So we're just gonna select that. And now within the main box here, right click, add folder, navigate to where your Game Boy games are stored. So again, mine are in a folder in my desktop. So I'm gonna select my Game Boy Advance folder, there we go. Now for core, we're gonna select MGBA, 
database, Nintendo, Game Boy Advance. And then just press OK, and all of your Game Boy Advance games should now populate your desktop menu. And another nice thing about the desktop menu is it will let you know if your BIOS file is being detected properly if you have chosen to use one. So you can see up here, present, optional GBA BIOS.bin, it's in green, means it's detected. And then other optional files like the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Super Game Boy BIOS files are not being detected because I didn't place anything like that because I don't use this core for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, or Super Game Boy. But anyway, if you want to make these playlists look a little bit prettier, you can select a game, right click on it and tell it to download the thumbnail, and as long as the games are named correctly, it should find a cover art within the built-in database and download it. So typically that is the name of the game followed by a region code. There are always exceptions to this though, there will be times it can't find the cover arts, but you can just go through and manually download them until you come across one of those instances. And there we go, it doesn't like my Advance Wars 2 cover art or naming convention here. So what I like to do in those instances is head over to GameFAQs, look up the game in question, head to their media section, boxes, and there's typically a selection of box arts for every region of the game. So I need a Advance Wars 2 Game Boy Advance cover art, there we go. Save image as, and I'm just gonna save it onto my desktop. So back on the desktop, there's that cover art. Unfortunately, these images are in JPEG format, which don't work by default in the desktop menu. So you are going to need to convert them over to PNG format. So on Windows, just open up Paint, drag the box art in, and then just save it as a PNG format picture. Don't even need to change the name or anything, just save it as is. And there we go, now I have a PNG format of that box art. So back over in the desktop menu, make sure you have the game selected that you wanna add cover art for, and then just drag the cover art over into the box art section here on the right, and there we go, it is now applied. So you could go through and do this with all of your games as desired, but for my example here, I'm just gonna call it there. So once you have your playlist made to your specifications, you can close out of the desktop menu. Go back over to the RetroArch, press F on your keyboard to make it full screen. And now to get your new playlist to show up, you need to just click the Restart RetroArch button on the main menu. And there we go. Now over on the left-hand side of the screen, I have a new Game Boy Advance playlist with all of my Game Boy Advance games showing up and cover art over on the right if I downloaded it or manually added it to the entry. But now to play a game, all you need to do is select it and tell it to run. And there you have it, Game Boy Advance games up and running on the PC version of RetroArch. And with just that, you are ready to experience the vast majority of content that the Game Boy Advance had to offer. But this being emulation, there are a number of optional things you can set within the core options of the MGBA core if desired. So from this point in the video on, that is what we are going to be covering. So to access your RetroArch quick menu, you can press the guide button on a controller or the F1 key on your keyboard, and that'll bring you in. From here, scroll down to core options, and our first set of options are within the system tab here. So first up, Game Boy Model. This is set to auto detect by default, and that should work for an overwhelming majority of things. But if for whatever reason you're trying to do homebrew or something and it's not detecting it right, you can manually set a Game Boy Model here. Next, use BIOS file if found. So if you place that GBA BIOS file in your system folder, it will automatically use it and show the boot animation. If you want to use the built-in BIOS that MGBA offers, you could just turn this option off. But then again, you might run into compatibility issues in rare cases. Now, if you want to have the full compatibility that an official BIOS gives you, but you don't want to have the boot animation every time that you start up a GBA game, you can enable the skip BIOS intro option. So if with this option on, you will not get that BIOS intro showing up every time you load up a GBA game. Personal preference on if you want to use this one or not. Next up, video tab. So our first three options are all for Game Boy emulation, which we are not covering in this video. This video is specifically for GBA emulation. I prefer different cores for Game Boy and Game Boy Color, so I never really touch any of the Game Boy emulation stuff that MGBA has to offer. So our first option within the video tab that we're going to use is color correction. So this will mimic the colors that you would see on an actual GBA screen. Now this might result in a little bit more washed out colors that some of you might not enjoy. So personal preference on if you want to use color correction or not. If, if you want richer colors, definitely leave it off. But if you want a more authentic experience, turn it on. 
Next up, inner frame blending. So this is another accuracy setting here. This will mimic the ghosting that was found on a Game Boy Advance's LCD screen. And some games do need this for their transparency effects to work. So there's a number of different options available. There's simple, smart, and then there is more accurate LCD ghosting. So personal preference on if you want to use them. But again, for some games that require them for transparency effects, you will need to use simple or smart, if not the full on ghosting effect. But just for a demonstration here, here is LCD ghosting with the accurate setting in Ace Combat Advance here. So as you can see, it definitely adds a bit more blur to the image, but it is more authentic to what a Game Boy Advance's screen was offering at the time. So really cool burst of nostalgia for me personally. And next up, the audio tab. So our first option is a low-pass filter. So if you don't like the default sound of the Game Boy emulation, you can enable this to kind of soften it a bit. And then you could select a filter level here. This is all going to be personal preference on if you use it. So you're just going to have to set, set it and test it for yourselves. Me, I like to leave it off personally. Next up, input and auxiliary devices. So our first option here, allow opposing directional input. This isn't really something most end users are going to need, but the options here if you need it. Next up, solar sensor levels. So if you plan on playing the Boktai games, this is how you will set the solar sensor level for your game during gameplay. So there are 10 steps of solar sensor and you'll just select the one that you need for the game. Next up, Game Boy Player Rumble. So when the Game Boy Player came out, it allowed certain Game Boy Advance games to allow for Rumble compatibility with a GameCube controller, so you can emulate this feature if you desire. It can cause issues in some games, so if it does, you can just come back in and turn it off. And finally, our Performance tab. First up is the Idle Loop Removal. So this is more of a setting for lower-end computers. So it's set to Remove Known by default, so this will help maintain faster emulation speed. And there's a couple different options in here. There's detect and remove and then don't remove. So if you want the most authentic and accurate experience, you can turn on don't remove, but it's really not necessary. You can just leave it on remove known and be just fine. And then finally, frame skipping options and bleh, we're not, we're just, no, 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 no. And that's going to do it as far as our core options are concerned. So as always, if there are options you want to have set for some games but not others, such as LCD ghosting or color correction, you could save them on a per game basis by going up to manage core options and saving them as a game options file. That way that game will have certain settings and it won't affect the rest of your Game Boy Advance emulation. Now one last thing I want to cover here before we send you on your way is shaders. RetroArch has an extensive selection of shaders to make your emulation really shine if desired. So heading into the shaders tab, you can enable them by pressing the on button, and then you can begin loading up your shader presets. Do make sure that you have downloaded them within the online updater before this, of course. So head into load, shader slang, and then just go through and find one that just makes you happy. That's really all there is to it. So when it comes to Game Boy Advance emulation, I like to use either a handheld border or just an LCD filter. So, in the handheld section, there's a console border setting here. And then I can find the, the Game Boy Advance ones here. So, GBA. Let's try the 5X one here. Nope, these ones just don't work anymore. Got it. Uh, same thing happened with PSP. So, unfortunately, the handheld border ones are a bit broken right now. Let me just show this off because I think if I just use the unscaled one, it'll work correctly. So, they don't have one for GBA. Awesome. Let's try this one then. Yeah, there we go. So, that one's uh, looking a little funky there because of some of the settings I already have set within the core. So, let's try turning off color correction and LCD ghosting because the shader is also trying to mimic those effects. There we go. That's a little bit better. But there's kind of an example of what it should have looked like with the other one, except that it should have been a little bit bigger. So unfortunately, these shaders aren't quite cooperating, so I'm going to find a different one. Let's see here. We'll go back into the handheld borders here. And I'm just going to apply a Game Boy Advance um, kind of a grid line filter here. 
So here we go. LCD grid for Game Boy Color. No, it's Game Boy Color. I want Game Boy Advance. Here we go. So this one will mimic the color correction and motion blur settings, so I don't need to have those set within the core options. So there we go. And there we go. Now we have motion blur and color correction with the GBA grid lines. So looks pretty awesome. Again, pretty authentic. But again, all shaders are personal preference, so just go with whichever one you really like and enjoy. And when you find one, just go back into the shaders tab, click on the save button, and save them as a core preset so that way every time you load up a GBA game, that is the shader that will greet you. And there you have a Game Boy Advance emulation within the PC version of RetroArch. Pretty straightforward to get this one set up, but my goodness if the GBA doesn't have just such an amazing library of games that you could sink hours into. As always, thank you so much for watching today's tutorial. I hope it helps you get your GBA emulation projects up and running to your liking. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of big favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that like-dislike button, depending on how much you like this tutorial, as well as that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I have loads coming your way, and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel and keeping it going, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place going and bringing this content to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers. Thank you for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. You are the truest of champs and we are so grateful to you. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.